Revelation 21, 5. Then the one sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. Lahat ay babaguhin ng Diyos. So, what is new? Ano nga ba ang maganda sa mga bagay na bago? Panginoon, salamat po dahil kayo ay makapangyarihan at kaya niyong baguhin ang lahat ng dapat baguhin. Sa sandaling ito, Panginoon, pinapasalamat namin ang naging pagpapala niyo sa mga nakalipas na araw at ipinagpapasalamat na namin ngayon pa lang ang mga pagpapalang darating pa. Nawa, Panginoon, maunawa namin ang ibig sabihin na gusto niyo lahat ng bagay mabago para sa aming ikabubuti, sa aming beneficyo. Father, we ask you to be our preacher, our teacher, our healer, and friend. We seek you in the name of your Son, Jesus. So what is new? Acts 5, 19 to 20. But that night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and led the apostles out. Nakakulong ang mga apostles, ipinakulong ng temple authorities, pero pinawalan ng Diyos at pinalabas sa kulungan. So jail doors opened, prisoners got out. This is exactly the work of Jesus. Both literally and symbolically, Jesus sets people out of prisons. And apparently, what was that symbolic prison? It was the prison of the mind. The angel said, Go to the temple and tell the people everything about this new life. So merong bagong buhay, merong bagong pag at pinapunta sila sa temple doon kung sino yung nagpakulong sa kanila. Doon sila pinapunta para ideklara nila na sila ay nakalaya na physically from the prison at naulalaya mentally, intellectually, and spiritually from the prison of the mind promoted by the temple, by old-fashioned teaching, by the laws of Moses promoted by the temple. So the temple here resembles the old life. It was a jail. And... God would like to lead people out of that old type of life into life in Jesusness of freedom. So that temple would be replaced with newness. That's why dun sa temple pinapunta yung mga ipinakulong ng temple mismo because Jesus gives new life. Hindi lang pagbabagong buhay na nagbago yung ugali, nagbago yung mga habits, kundi panibagong paraan ng pag-iisip. A new life that replaces the old life. So habang pinag-aaralan natin ang mga bagay na ito, dapat nating laging suriin, ano ba yung old way of thinking ko? Especially about godliness, about God, about myself, about my relationship with God and with other people. And engage it with the idea of newness. Romans 6.4 When we were baptized, we died and were buried with Christ. We were baptized so that we would live a new life. So yun ang talagang gusto ng Diyos na mangyari sa mga tao. Mabaptize sila, hindi para maging member ng kung anong religion lamang. Hindi para ipakita sa mga tao na meron silang religious experience. Kundi para magsimulang maunawa nila na merong isang new life available to them. Sadly, marami mga tao after baptism, they only go back to their old lives. But baptism means death to and freedom from the law. The old lifestyle referred to here is none other than a life ruled by the law, by the temple, by old-fashioned religiosity that God wanted these people to be free from. And Jesus introduces new rules and inspires new attitudes. Luke 22, 20, After the supper, He took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, meaning a new arrangement, a new order in my blood. Jesus was very emphatic that it was about His blood, meaning it was not about the blood of animals that were being sacrificed in the temple. Laging may reference sa temple to, sa law. Laging ganun ang pagbasa sa mga newness na itunuturo ni Jesus. It was His blood, not the blood of animals, and therefore not the temple sacrifices. 1 Corinthians 5.7 Get rid of the old yeast. Then you will be like fresh new bread made without yeast, and that is what you are. Yung yeast, inilalagay yan sa harina para umalsa. Pero ang pag-alsa na yun, parang hangin lang, walang katuturan. Parang yung mga tinapay na ang lalaki sa labas, pag pinisa mo ang lead pala, kasi pinaalsa lang ng yeast. At sabi ni Jesus, ganyan kayo. Huwag na kayong 
gumamit ng mga yes na yan. Pampamukhang relihiyoso, pampamukhang big time kayo sa spirituality, pero ang totoo wala naman. Matthew 16:11 to 12. Don't you know by now that I am not talking to you about bread? Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Finally, the disciples understood that Jesus wasn't talking about the yeast used to make bread, but about the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So ano ang sinasabi ni Jesus tungkol sa mga katuroan ng mga Pharisees na ito, ng mga Sadducees na ito, ng mga masters of the law, masters of tradition? Yeast lang yan. Pinapaalsa ka lang, mukha kang malaki, pero wala ka naman talaga sa loob. Sabi, ingatan nyo yan, iwasan nyo ang mga yan. Akala talaga nung iba pag sinasabi ni Jesus, huwag kayong kumakain ng yeast, dapat unleavened bread. They take it very seriously that even after the Lord's Supper, dapat unleavened bread ang ginagamit ng lahat ng tao. Eh, sinabi na nga ni Jesus, hindi tinapay na harina ang pinag-uusapan dito. Kundi yung isip nyo, yung utak nyo, na pag nilagyan nyo ng mga yeast ng Pharisees, mukhang malaki, mukhang tama, pero walang laman. 2 Corinthians 3.6 He makes us worthy to be the servants of this new covenant or agreement that comes from the Holy Spirit and not from a written law. After all, the law brings death, but the Spirit brings life. Here there is a contrast between the law and the Spirit, which is aligned to death and life. Law brings death, the Spirit brings life. Once again, the concept of newness sabi ng 2 Corinthians, may bago ng kasunduan ng Diyos at ang mga tao na ginawa ni Jesus. Iba na ang contract, iba na ang covenant, iba na ang usapan. Hindi nadadaanin sa pamamagitan ng law, ng mga do's and don'ts, ng iyong mga accomplishment, ang pagpunta sa Diyos. Dadaanin na ito sa kabutihan ng Diyos na ang kanyang sariling anak, ang kanyang ipinadala upang dalhin kasama niya ang kabutihan ng Ama at ang pagpapala ng kalangitan. Pagka daw kay Moses ka umasa, death ang mapapala mo kasi hindi mo kayang sundin ang lahat ng utos ni Moses. And if you break one, though you obey a lot of it, but you break one, it's as good as breaking all. Therefore, no matter what you do, you die. You die spiritually, you are sinful, you are guilty. But God solved that problem and sent His Son so that by believing in Jesus, you become righteous by faith. Samantalang, all along, people were trying to become righteous by works, by obeying the law of Moses, but everybody is always just a dismal failure. Bigulang lahat. Hebrews 8.13, By calling this covenant new, God has made the first one obsolete. How clearer can we be? Hebrews says that God had already made the old law obsolete. And yet, hanggang ngayon, ang mga Kristiyano, ang mga mahilig mag-aral ng Bible at mag-memorize, batuhan ang batuhan ng law. Ah, na-break mo ang law na to, babatuhin ka. Na-break mo ang law na to, batuhan ang batuhan. E, obsolete na nga daw, ba't ipambabato mo pa? Importante yung maunawa natin ito. And this is so beautifully uh, enshrined in the story of the woman caught in the act of adultery. Because the law, the verses say that she must be put to death together with the man. Pareho lang sila. Pero hindi siya ipinabato ni Jesus. Precisely because that law prescribing death to such type of sinners according to the standard of the law, that law had already been made obsolete. Kasi kung hindi pa obsolete yung law na dapat patayin ang nangangalo niya, hindi eh lawbreaker pala si Jesus. But of course, because the law had been canceled, there was no more law that makes you guilty to the point that you should die for it because Jesus died for your sin. Even in the court of justice, wala dapat double jeopardy. When you already are punished for one type of sin, you should not be punished again for the same type. Why will you be punished for your sin when Jesus already was punished for your sin? Paid na eh. Kaya mahalaga yung maintindihan natin, freedom in Christ. And Hebrews 8.13 continues, And what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. Yun ang kahihinatnan ng law. Obsolete, outdated, disappear. God, through Jesus, gives even a new Jerusalem, a new temple from heaven. 
Pinag-uusapan natin ang maraming new. Pati new Jerusalem, pati new temple. To replace the temple from below or on earth. To replace the temple of stone made by humans. And to replace the temple in Jerusalem. Nakakapagtaka hanggang ngayon, maraming mga Christians ah, nahuhumaling do sa temple o sa guho ng temple na nasa Jerusalem at marami mga movement pa na i-repair yan, gawin yan, padala ng pera, eh, sinabi na nga ni Jesus na wow, wala ng temple. Sabi niya, destroy the temple and I will rebuild it in three days. And in three days, when He rose from the dead, He was already the new temple. Hindi na yung temple na bato. At apparently, kahit kailan, hindi naman talaga tinirhan ng Diyos ang temple na bato. Press release lang yun ng mga priests that wanted to control the entire nation so that the entire nation will have to go to that one specific temple controlled by one specific group of priests. That's why that made them very, very powerful. And they had to demonize all other places of worship, all other high places, kasi kakumpitensya ng Jerusalem. Acts 7, 48-50 but the Most High God doesn't live in houses made by humans. It is just as the prophet said when he spoke for the Lord. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me? The answer is none. Or in what place will I rest? The answer is nowhere. Because God fills heaven and earth with His presence how can God rest in a specific place? Sabi niya, I have made everything. Which means you can't make anything for me. You don't make a house for me. I made the earth which is your home. And even that great earth is only my footstool. So how can I reside even just on earth? Or in one continent? Or in one country? Much less in one building. The glory of God fills the heavens. How presumptuous those people to think that they can build a house for God. But religions always build houses for God. Kaya nga lahat ng archaeological findings, diggings, and even existing ancient buildings and civilizations and ruins of ancient civilizations, the most fabulous, the biggest buildings are always the temples. So you can imagine that all the resources of a society, of a civilization, of generations going into building constructions. Not into feeding people. Not into healing and serving people. Not into equalizing the economic system and making life bearable for people. No. Lahat ng pera ng tao nagpupunta sa templo para igawa ng templo ang Diyos. Siyempre, yun ang press release ng mga priest. Inuuto nila yung mga tao. We will build a house for God. So, siyempre, bigay mo lahat. Samatala, ang gusto ng Diyos, maging mabuti ka sa mahihirap, magpakain ka, tumulong ka, hindi yung puro sa building lang mo na ubusin ang pera mo. But because, sino bang nakatira sa building? Diyos o yung mga pare? Sila. Sa lahat ng bansa, sa lahat ng civilization, sa lahat ng religions, halos. At kasi sa Pilipinas, tingnan mo lahat ng bayan-bayan. Tingnan mo kalino pinakamalalaki. Bago nagkaroon ng mga skyscrapers and high rises. Ha? Talagang napunta doon lahat ng resources. At gustong gusto ng mga priests o ng anumang religious leader, anumang brand yun o anumang title. But the fallen Jewish temple will not be rebuilt. A new one will be given. Noong AD 70, nagkaroon ng malaking-malaking Jewish revolt against Rome because Rome was the colonial master of most of the Mediterranean areas in, at that time. And the Romans came to Jerusalem and destroyed it. Destroyed it. At yun ang sinabi ni Jesus. Matthew 13, 1-2 As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of His disciples said to Him, Look, teacher, what massive stones! What magnificent buildings! Ibig sabihin, wow! Ang galing-galing natin. Ang galing-galing ng ating religion. Ito ang ating temple because it was the pride of the entire Israel. It was the symbol of their nation. Yun ang kanilang pinaggagastasan. Bawat isa may temple tax. Binabayad nila taon-taon for the maintenance. At ang napakarami pa mga koleksyon. Sabi niya, ito ang pinakamaganda. Verse 2. Do you see all these great 
buildings, replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down from the mouth of Jesus. Who is the mouthpiece of God? Who is the spokesperson for God? Who is God that became flesh? This is what God would like to say about the temple. Kasi yun na lang ang naging Diyos nila. Ang dami na nang nalikhang mga uh, kautosan tungkol lang doon sa temple na yun. Sinong pwedeng pumasok? Hanggang dito ka lang, hanggang dito ka lang. Na-require nila na yung high priest lang na nakakapasok sa most holy place. It empowered the priesthood. And disempowered everybody else. They became the custodians of heaven. They became the key keepers of heaven. Sila lang yung naging makapangyarihan. Sabi ni Jesus sa Matthew 12:6, I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. And that was Jesus. The same Jesus who now lives in your heart and in mine. Because when you believe in Jesus, He lives in you, you become the temple of the living God. Ayaw yan ng mga malalaking mga religious leaders na umuso at maintindihan ng mga tao because mawawala sila ng control. Ano sabi ni Jesus? When you pray, saan daw pupunta? Sa temple? Go into your room. Close the door. Pray to your Father in secret. And whatever the Father sees in secret will be rewarded. So, ina-empower niya yung mga tao, hindi niyo kailangan lumapit sa mga religious leaders para kay magdasal. Although, hindi naman masamang magdasal together. Pero hindi required na yun lang ang paraan para magdasal. Doon ka lang pupunta. Kasi kinokontrol ka nga. Yung mga pilgrimages na yan, kailangan pumunta ka pa doon, pumunta ka pa niya para ka magdasal. God fills every space and every segment of time. Everywhere. So God is accessible. And that's what Jesus did. God was made close to people. Kaya nga ang tawag sa kanya, Emmanuel, God with us. God in us. Hindi mo kailangan yung mga religion para ka lumapit sa Diyos. Although some religious teachings and some religious activities, especially when led and managed by people who have a higher consciousness, might be able to lead us into a higher appreciation of God. But you may and you can have a very personal relationship with God with or without religion. Now, why do we have religion? Kung advantageous sa'yo. Kung dahil nakakaroon ka ng mga kapamilya, kaibigan na tumutulong sa'yo, nakikipagtulungan sa'yo, nakakaroon ka ng enlightened and uh, progressive teaching, di nakakabuti yan sa'yo. Pero kung ginagawa sa'yo ng relihiyon, ay bawalan ka ng bawalan, itali ka ng itali, takutin ka ng takutin, at hututan ka ng hututan, ba't ka pa magre-religion? Nagamit ka, pero wala kang pakinabang. Doon pinapalaya ng Diyos ang mga tao. Kaya mahalagang maintindihan that the old city of Jerusalem will not be rebuilt. Matthew 23, 37-38 Jerusalem, Jerusalem, sabi ni Jesus, now your temple will be deserted. Hindi ikinalugod ng Diyos ang mga naganap doon. Ang naging politika noon. Ang naging pahirap noon sa mga tao. Revelation 21:5. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Hindi sinabing i-remodel natin, i-repair. No, I'm making everything new. Completely destroy what's in your mind because I'm going to give you a new thought, a new way of life that will work for you, not a religious system that will only use you and abuse you and exploit you and make you feel guilty and dependent on the ministrations of priests and religious leaders. Sabi niya, I'm making everything new because I'm not happy with the old. Revelation 3.12, Everyone who wins the victory will be made into a pillar in the temple of my God and they will stay there forever. So yung temple, hindi na building. It is the fellowship of believers who overcome because of Jesus. A new temple will be given. Hindi kailangan mag-fundraising para buuin na naman yung temple sa Jerusalem. Pag binuo mo na naman yun, it will become the religious center of the world. It will empower that nation. It will empower that people over other peoples of the world. May political ano yan, tendencies to be used and abused. 2 Peter 3.13 But God has promised a new heaven and a new earth where justice will rule. 
Akala namang iba, literal to, ang New Earth, dudurugin ang planeta na ito. So hindi bali na, ipulyot na natin, dumihan na natin, tulay dudurugin. Walang ganun. Yun ang interpretation ng marami over time. Pero wala talagang nagsasabing ganun yun. Because isa siyang talinghaga. The new heaven, the new earth, where justice will rule, means a new world order where there will be justice when there was in justice. A new world order? Very, very probably not a new planet. Not your usual end of the world interpretation, but that is what the verses really say when you study them carefully. When you get out of the mold, yung kulungan ng utak natin na binuo ng mga religious teachers and teachings in the last many, many years, nakadrawing na sa utak natin ang lahat, tao lang nagdrawing nun. Kailangan bumalik ka sa Bible, basahin mo talaga ang sinasabi ng Bible para hindi ka mauto. Para malaya ka because Jesus sets free. Revelation 21, 2-3 Then I saw the new Jerusalem, that holy city, coming down from God in heaven. So again, you must read it with some poetic skills that the new Jerusalem is a heavenly idea. It is not a physical building. It is coming from above, not from below. Pero pag gumawa ka ng building na physical, it comes from below because the stone comes from below, the materials come from below, from plants that get their nutrients from below. But this one is from above. It means it's above our present consciousness at this point. It is above the usual that we have already always known. Verse 3, I heard loud voice shout from the throne. Nung binaba yung new city. God's home is now with His people. He will live with them and they will be His own. Yes, God will make His home among His people. Yun ang new heaven, yun ang new city, yun ang new Jerusalem. It is not a geographical location. It is a state of the heart. Because God will live among His people. It means that the Spirit of God, the idea of God, the whole concept of God will now reside in people's hearts, in people's minds more specifically. So a new heaven, a new Jerusalem is a new way of thinking. A kind of thinking that subscribes you to the thoughts of God, to the kindness of God, and, be, and you become a dispenser of that same thought and kindness to the world, to other people. And then, the world will become the kingdom of God. It is not a physical, political kingdom. Yung kasing interpretation ng church all throughout time, pattern yan sa Western monarchy. Kaya God is king, and then rango, rango, rango na naman. That's Western politics. Kasi ginamit ng Western monarchs and Western religion, ang religion, ang church, to perpetuate the monarchies, to empower the royals, who in turn give favor to the religious leaders. So sabuatan niyan ng simbahan at ng palasyo, sabuatan niyan ng mga political and religious leaders to keep each other in power. Iisipin mo ba talaga literally that God wears a crown like the monarchs of Europe? It is an artistic interpretation that favored the monarchy, the royalty. But God lives in our hearts. God loves to be with the people. Kaya nga si John the Baptist, nung nagsimulang magturo, hindi naman siya sa loob ng temple nagturo, hindi sa palas, sa mga gilid-gilid, mga sulok-sulok, kasi pinapakita ng Diyos, He is everywhere. Hindi siya franchise ng temple. Hindi siya franchise ng priests. That ordinary people can be spoken to by God, can be used by God as spokespersons, and meetings, speaking about the wisdom and love of God can happen anywhere especially outside religious buildings. It was a very revolutionary idea. Nagbabaptize si John sa ilog-ilog, mga putik-putik, alam niyo yung ilog ng Jordan, sobrang romanticized sa kwento, pero sapa lang yun ang maputik. Ipinapakita, hindi kailangan pabuloso, hindi kailangan grandioso, because God is with the people. And the people at the time, and up to now, many people up to now, are living on the earth para sila mga lupa, Tawag nga na iba, hampas lupa. Kasi talagang amoy lupa, puro lupa ang kuko, nagtatrabaho, mahihirap. Dinala doon ng Diyos, hindi yung monarch na magaganda yung mga robe. Sila yung mga European monarchs, sila yung mga monarchs of the kingdoms that used religion to justify their power. 
kasi divine rights of kings. Dapat isinusuri paano may manipulate ng simbahan at ng politika ang relihiyon para magamit yon to enrich both the church and the monarch at the expense of the people. And God was not happy with that. Kaya sabi, wala, walang matitirang bato sa temple na yan. Guguhuin lahat yan. Ibababaan ng Diyos ang langit sa puso ng mga tao. Kaya nung ipinanganak si Jesus, sa temple ba pinanganak? No. Sa isang sabsaban. Sa bahay ng hayop. Para ipakitang ang Diyos ay bumaba. Hindi ka pinapaakyat tulad ng ginagawa ni Moses. Umakyat ka, umakyat ka. Tulad ng ginagawa ng law, ng Pharisees, ng Sadducees. Gawin mo ito, gawin mo ito, umakyat ka. Pag nakakit ka, laglag ka na naman. Tapos akyat, akyat ka, laglag. Buong buhay, laglag ka ng laglag. Kaya kailangan mo lagi ang ministration ng temple. Kasi magbibigay ka ng offering, magladala ka ng hayop, you offer para sa kasalanan. Oh. At ang gusto ng mga pare, the perfect animals, dahil gusto daw yun ng Diyos, press release lang nila yon Kasi sila naman ang kumakain ng mga hayop na yun eh. So, dala-dala ng taong pinaka-best animals, dadali sa temple, you offer. Kunti lang sinusunog doon yung taba-taba. All the other parts go to the kitchen of the priests. So, sabi, ayoko na nito. So, ang sawa na ako sa paggamit sa akin ng mga relihiyon Sobrang ginagamit ako na front ng mga religion. Inuuto ang mga tao, tinuhututan sila, pero ang nakikinabang, religious leaders lang. Kaya sabi, no, 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 no. We will bring God to the people. John the Baptist will be among the people. He is not a special priest. He just came from the people. Ang suot pa nga niya, masyadong common. Ang ginamit ng mga tao, mga prophets were common. The first leaders of the church were common people. Isn't the message clear? That God would like to bypass religion incorporated. That God would like to bypass the powerful religious systems that entrap God within the temple under the control of the priests. Kaya inilabas. So, lagi ang dalangin natin, pumunta ako sa langit, pumunta ako sa langit. But God's people obviously will not go to up to heaven because God will go down to earth to be with His people. Suriin natin to. Lagi ang gusto natin to, to heaven, di ba? Kasi pinalaki tayo sa ganong relihiyon. Si Jesus, nung tinanong siya, teach us how to pray. Sa niyo, pray like this, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, will, thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hindi sinabi ni Jesus na, ganito kayo magdasal. Lord, dali niyo po ako sa langit. No, ang sabi ng dasal, ibaba niyo ang langit. Hindi namin kayang abutin. Please, ibaba nyo na lang. Hindi ba? When you pray according to God's will, He hears us. Obviously, Jesus was speaking for the Father. That was the will of the Father to bring heaven down to earth, not to force people to go up because we couldn't. Hindi natin kaya. Pero hanggang ngayon, pag sumali ka sa mga, lalo mga verse and Bible-based mga religions, tatadadang ka na naman ng mga requirements, paakyating ka na naman. Laglag, katuloy ng laglag. Your life is a life of guilt. Self-judgment and judgment of others. Batuhan ang batuhan. Hindi tahimik. Hindi payapa ang buhay. Pero sabi, your kingdom come. Ang ganda nga sa Tagalog eh, mapasa amin ang kaharian mo. Jesus makes the believers become God's new temple. After having been made the temple of God, si Jesus, now, through Jesus, every believer becomes a temple of God. That's why the temple is now indestructible. A building you can destroy. But how can you destroy everybody who believes? 1 Corinthians 3.16 All of you surely know that you are God's temple and that His Spirit lives in you. Ang press release ng mga priest, the Spirit of God lives in the temple and not on all parts of the temple, not in the holy of holies, but in the most holy place only. Napaka-limited. But now you are God's temple and God's Spirit lives in you. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-pilgrimage sa Jerusalem. Although kung gusto mo mag-turi-turista, magpasyal-pasyal, good, nice to do. Pero hindi mo kailangan gawin yun para ka magdasal. Ito ka pa magdadasal? Wala ba ang Diyos dito? Sabi nga niya, go into your room. Eh, pastor, wala po akong room. Eh, dilalong mabuti. Kasi wala ka na kailangan puntahan. Kahit saan, magdasal ka na lang. Pero walang specific place. Racket yan kasi kumikita. 
sa offering ang mga pilgrimage places. Kaya umiimbento sila mga himalahir, himalader para may mag-pilgrimage. Huy, kukunti ang koleksyon. Teka, kailangan natin ng himala. Para dayuhin tayo ng mga tao. Kawawa ang mga tao. Kaya si Jesus, nung tinignan niya yung Jerusalem, napaiyak siya eh. Sabi niya, kawawa ang Jerusalem. Gustong gusto ko kayong ipunin tulad ng pag-iipon ng nanay na manok sa kanya mga inakay. Pero ang titigas ng ulo niyo, ayaw niyong paipon. Sabi ni Jesus. Now, ibababa daw ang Temple of God. Yun ang new Jerusalem. Yun ang new temple. But this could have begun at Pentecost. Ngayon, ang mga tao, walang inaabangan kundi second coming ni Jesus. Walang inaabangan kundi ang end of the world. Have we ever considered that Jesus could have come already at Pentecost? Nung sinasabing, I will come future tense, pero after a few years or a few days nangyari na, tapos na, nagsimula ng dumating. Either nakompleto na yung pagdating o nagsimula na yung ongoing progressive coming of Jesus into us. Acts 2, 13-18, nung ang mga disciples ay nag-iipon-ipon sa isang bahay during the Feast of Pentecost, tapos dumating ang Holy Spirit, nag-speak sila in various languages of the world, napagkamalan silang lasing. Others made fun of the Lord's followers and said, They are drunk. Peter spoke, You are wrong to think that these people are drunk. But this is what God had the prophet Joel say. Sabi, hindi kami laseng. Ito ang sinabi ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng bibig ni Joel long ago. When the last days come, I will give my spirit to everyone. Look, everyone, not to an exclusive prophet's club. Your sons and daughters will prophesy and young men will see visions and your old men will have dreams. Sabi lang just through Joel, darating ang panahon, yung end times, that your sons and daughters will prophesy, no longer just the prophets. At may daughters, ha? hindi lang sons. Young men, old men, hindi lang para sa isang specific age or gender. In those days, I will give my spirit to my servants, both men and women, how emphatic, and they will prophesy. Tapos ngayon, marami pang Bible-based churches, hindi pwede mag-preach ang women kasi women sila. Sinabi na ngang, both men and women. Sabi ko nun, there's equality here. Age group, gender group, whatever. At Pentecost, interestingly, when the Holy Spirit was given, the new heaven and earth and temple could have been given, could have begun. God descended to be with His people at Pentecost. The second coming, so-called, could have happened. Or at the very least, could have already started. Because Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, or both, if you like to count them as separate, came down. John 14, 15-19, Jesus said to His disciples, Then I, I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit, who will help you always and be with you. So sabi ni Jesus, ipapanalangin ko sa Ama na ipadala sa inyo ang Banila Espiritu para tulungan kayo sa samahan. And then Jesus, interestingly, goes on, I won't leave you like orphans. I will come back to you. So siya na ba o ang Holy Spirit? O isa lang yun. Pero sabi niya, biglang siya na yung babalik eh. I will come back to you. In a little while, the prophet of this world won't be able to see me, but you will see me. Biglang si Jesus na. Kaya sinabi niya, I will never leave you, I will never desert you. So Jesus promised He's coming back within the normal lifetime of the first generation believers. Not in some remote future from the time when He spoke. Bihirang pansinin ng mga tao na ipinangako ni Jesus na mangyayari ang lahat ng sinabi, ang pagbaba ng kalangitan ng ang kaharian ng Diyos, ang kanyang pagbabalik sa lifetime ng original hearers of the message. It means it should have been no later than 90 or 100 years after Jesus went to heaven. Matthew 16, 27 to 28. The Son of Man will soon come, meaning Jesus. I promise you, promise pa, hindi sabing I tell you, I promise you that some of those standing here, hearing me, ayan kayo, will not die before they see the Son of Man coming with His kingdom. So bago natapos ang isang lifetime ng mga original hearers, dumating na uli si Jesus dala ang kingdom. Hindi lang natin napapansin kasi ang inaantay natin yung dramatic 
na maraming pyrotechnic na end of the world na ipinopromote ng mga relihiyon. But what if the end of the world began at Pentecost? And what world? Not end of the planet, but the end of the temple world. The end of the Jewish system world. The end of animal sacrifice world. The end of the law of Moses in a new era. A new beginning has happened. The kingdom of God reigning in the hearts of believers, not in the temple in Jerusalem. So the kingdom has come. Eh, paano po yung mga, ano, yung mga mangyayaring nakakatakot? O oh, sige, yun ang paniwalaan mo para ka matakot. Pero sinabi na ni Jesus, pinapangako ko sa inyo, kayo mga nakikinig, aabutan nyo ng buhay ang pagbabalik ko. So dapat nangyari na yun. Hindi lang napansin ng mundo. Kasi ang inaantay natin yung Hollywood style na second coming. Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, equated what happened at Pentecost with Joel's prophecy. So si Jesus sinabi yun, si Peter sinabi yun. Sabi, hindi kami lasing. Ang nangyayari ngayon, yan ang prophecy ni Joel na tupad na. Eh sabi, in the last days, ha? So yung last days nagsimula na nun. Last days of what? Of the planet? Hindi naman sinabi eh. Last days of the law, probably. Last days of legalism. Last days of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Last days of the temple. In fact, since then up to now, the temple was never rebuilt. Tapos ngayon, pag nirebuild mo yun, romantic ka, marami kang mga emosyon tungkol doon, eh anong gagawin mo pag nabuo uli yun? Mag-offer ka uli ng sacrifices? Kasi for animal sacrifice yung temple. So buburahin mo ang ginawa ni Jesus. Kaya akala mo yung paggawa nun ay napakagandang gawain pero pag inanalyze mo, you're going to discredit the work of Jesus and go back to the law. Go back to sacrifices. Kaya sabi, I will make everything new. Hindi pwedeng lumalapit kayo kay Jesus pero yung utak nyo nado sa old law na sa lumang pag-iisip kaya nakakalito. 2 Corinthians 6.16 For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said it, I will live with them and walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people. Ibababa. Nakita nyo sa simula, ang Diyos ay kasama ni Adan at ni Eva. So mababalik yung ganun that God will be with His people. Yun nga mga tales of the manubo yung ating mga sinaunang mga alamat na ang Diyos ay kasama ng mga tao pero ang lapit-lapit ng langit pero sa pagbabayo nila ng palay tinatamaan ng halo ng pambayo yung langit kaya lumayo na lumayo yung Diyos dahil nauuga pero poetry yun ibig sabihin ang activity ng tao nakaka-offense sa Diyos kaya siya lumayo specifics lang yung pagbabayo kasi syempre yun ang nasa culture natin eh hindi ba sa Bible yun din ang dahilan kaya na palaya sila kaya nagkalayo ang Diyos sa tao dahil sa gawain ng tao so nakikita niyo yung ganda ng ating mga mito at mga alamat embedded doon yung mga universal truths of God dahil hindi naman imposible ang Diyos ay nagpahiwatig nagpakilala sa mga ninuno natin alang nga naman na ang Diyos na lumikha ng langit at lupa ay kauna-unahan lang beses nakarating sa Pilipinas nung dinala ni Magellan noong 1521 kailangan niya sumakay sa vapor para makarating dito na wala man lang siyang pagpapahiwatig, pagpapakilala sa mga ninuno natin. Kaya tayo nagkukultural redemption. Hinahanap natin ang mga bakas ng pagpapakilala ng Diyos maging sa mga ninuno natin outside of the temple in Jerusalem. Kasi nga, finranchise na nila. But God fills heaven and earth with His glory. Nilikha ng Diyos ang lahat ng tao, yes. Mahal ng Diyos ang lahat ng tao, yes. Sa Israel lang siya nagpakilala, yung iba puwera na. Hindi yata yung reasonable dapat nag-iisip tayo sa mga political repercussions of religious doctrines because they empower specific groups and disempower everything, everyone else. 2 Corinthians 5.1 For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, the eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. So yun ang temple na mahalaga. Not built by human hands, but, but built by the will of God. And that temple is now the fellowship of believers. It is not a building, it is a spiritual configuration of people united in belief, in faith, and in love. Kaya sa Luke 17.21, sabi ni Jesus, huwag niyong hanapin ang kingdom of God kung saan-saan because the kingdom of God is in you. Search inward because God is in you. Kaya ang pangalan ni Jesus, Emmanuel, 
God with us. God in us. Hindi God there in the temple, God here and there. God in me, God in you. Dapat yun ang ating i-cultivate na relationship. Kaya ang maraming ginagawa si Jesus, private prayer, quiet prayer, kasi nakukultivate doon ng very personal relationship with God. Not to discount the power and the beauty and the benefit of group prayer. But do not neglect your private correspondence with God. So maraming new. New ideas will be introduced to new minds. Because spiritual growth moves. Kung meron kang growth, may na-outgrow ka. Pag lumalaki ka, meron kang nakakalakhan. Lumaki pa mo, naiwan mo na yung chinelas. Lumaki ang katawan mo, naiwan mo na yung damit. Pero kung yung damit mo nung araw na naborn again ka 15 years ago, kasya pa rin sa'yo ngayon, di ka lumaki. O baka wow, lumuwag, lumiit ka. Kailangan na-outgrow mo. Yung dati mong idea, na-outgrow mo yung kasi nag-grow yung idea. Sabi ni Paul, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But now that I'm a man, I give up childish ways. And he was not talking about physical infancy and maturity. He was talking about spiritual infancy and maturity. Noong araw, bago lang ako sa Panginoon, meron ako mga paniniwala, meron ako mga ganitong gawi. Pero ngayon nagmamature na ako, iniiwan ko na yun, nag-grow na ako. Kaya dapat ganoon na mangyari sa atin. Huwag kayong sentimental na ayaw mong iwan yung dati mong belief, dati mong paniniwala, dati mong interpretation. Because if there is growth, there will be movement. And if you grow, you will always outgrow something. Like new wine in new wine containers. Kaya nang laging metaphor ni Jesus, newness. Mark 2.22, new wine must be put into new wine skins. Ibig sabihin lang, new ideas must be put into new brains. New doctrines must be accommodated by a new attitude para ka mag-grow. And Paul too introduced these new ideas to others. Jesus makes new interpretations of old laws. Yung sabi niya, I have not come to abolish the law, I came to fulfill them. Pero in actual practice, ang fulfillment niya of those rules and those laws, nireinterpret niya. Yes, I mean, you have heard this, now I'm telling you it's like this. You have heard it of old, now I'm telling you this is the new reading. Hindi niya literal na itinuloy lahat. Kasi kung literal na itutuloy ni Jesus ang lahat, huwag na lang siya dumating, nandun na lahat yun, eh, itutuloy na lang natin, ba't pa siya darating para ituloy lang pala niya. Iniba niya. Yun ang dapat natin maintindihan. Romans 7, 6, But the law no longer rules over us. We are like dead people, and it cannot have any power over us. Kasi pagpatay ka na, wala nang power sa yung legal system. So nung namatay ka na sa yung dating life because of Jesus, because siya yung namatay at namatay din tayo, good as namatay din tayo because siya yung namatay para sa atin, sabihin ganun, wala nang power sa yung law. So don't live like you are under the law and don't impose that law on everyone else and make them miserable. Romans 7, 6 to continue, Now we can serve God in a new way by obeying His Spirit and not in the old way by obeying the written law. Parang ganito, Pastor, yung anak ko po, kadalagang tao nagbuntis, policy po ng church namin, pag ganun, itakwil. Diba? Tanggalin sa ministry, kailangang makita niya ang bunga ng kanyang kasalanan. Bilang ina po, ate, anong sinasabi ng puso niyo? Eh, kawawa naman po yung anak ko. Ayaw ka naman sana ipahiya, pero sabi po ng church namin, dapat ipulpito yan. At dapat tawagin pa dyan yung partner in crime niya, preset niya. Ayaw ko na pong maranasan na anak ko yun. Ayaw ko naman talagang tanggalin pa siya sa kwart kasi yun nalang natira niyang ministry. Doon nalang siya may, may pag-asag makarinig lagi ng mga salita ng Diyos. O anong sabi ng policy niyo? Tanggalin, itiwalag, yun yung law. Anong sabi ng puso mo, ng spirit? Mahalin ko nalang po kasi anak ko naman eh. Hindi eh magpakananay ka na lang ibes magpakamoses. Nanay ka eh. Yun sa sabi, now we can serve God in a new way by obeying His Spirit, His loving Spirit. Yung hindi mo laging gusto mag-punish, hindi mo laging gusto mag-preach, ay kailangan turuan siya na eleksyon. Pero sa puso mo, naawa ka rin naman talaga, gusto mo nang yakapin, sinasampal-sampal mo pa. Yun yung law at yun yung Spirit. Yun yung Jesus at Moses. Yun yung death at life. Sabi ganun, 
malaya na kayo ngayon, hindi nyo kailangan pumatay, magpakamatay, bumato, magpakahirap dahil sinasabi ng law, ang i-obey nyo na yung spirit, the spirit of love. Pag nangyari yun, nagkakaroon ka ng new life, bumaba sa iyo ang new heaven, meron ka new temple. Jesus gives a new command, John 30 and 34, but I am giving you a new command. You must love each other, just as I have loved you. Ang religion, ang kanilang obsession, discipline. You must discipline one another. Diba? You must rebuke one another. Pastor, an open rebuke is better than a secret love. Pero sister, kahit ba secret love meron ka talaga? Wala po. Wala ka naman secret love. Eh, rebuke ka ng rebuke. Diba? Kasi kung talagang love mo, hindi mo nang pagre-rebuke eh. Lalo hihiyain mo pa. Ang mga religyoso kasi, laging gusto magparusa. To teach a lesson. Kasi ang pagkakakilala nila sa Diyos, Diyos na mapagparusa. Kasi yun, Diyos sa pinakilala ng temple. Yung bumubuka ang lupa, kakainin sila ng buhay, nadadala sila mga ahas, tutuklawin sila. Yun ang Diyos sa kilala nila. Yung lagi kumikidlat, lumilindol, nakakatakot na Diyos. Sabi naman ng Diyos, boring naman yung pagkakakilala sa akin ng mga tao. Di ba, loving ako? Kaya sabi niya kay Jesus, pumunta ka nga doon. And love, love, love them. Tell them I love them. Bakit kailangan silang matakot? Laging, fear God, fear God. Di ba, laging gano'n, God saw what you did. Yun yung old. Pero marami sa atin nasa old mode. Ha? Akala lang natin nasa New Testament tayo, pero utak natin nasa old. Kaya sabi, dibdibin nyo kung ibig sabihin ng new life. A new wine, a new wine skin. Sabi ganon, I'm giving you a new command. Forget all the others. If your implementation of all the old commands will be unloving, delete. Just be loving. Eh, paano pa yung mga kasalanan niya? Eh, kaya nga ako namatay para bayaran niya. Eh. Ba't sisingilin mo na naman siya? Believing in Jesus gives a new identity. The family of God. Mga kapatid, ni mami nyo ito ha. Huwag kayong magmadali. Huwag kayong tumingin sa mga relo nyo. One hour pa to. Diba? Kasi New Year, siyempre, dapat mahaba. May bagong identity hindi natin nakikilala. The family of God. At hindi yun church, hindi yun religious grouping. John 1.12 Yet some people accepted him and put their faith in him. So he gave them the right to be the children of God. There is now such a thing as children of God. At hindi yun bansag. Yun ay tunay. Kung pwede lang buksan yung genes mo, tingnan sa microscope, ah, child of God to. Diba? Ephesians 2.15 His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity. If we can be very technical, probably a new species, a new genus, but one new identity. This identity is known only to God and to evil spirits. The evil spirits see that identity. Yun yung sinasabing, but you were marked. Kita nila yung tatak na yun. Para yung itinatak kay Cain, may mark siya noon, but it was a literal one. Pero may kilala ng mga evil spirit ang mga anak ng Diyos. Kaya sabi, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's why there is no witchcraft against the people of God. Hindi ka tatablan because you belong to the children of God, to the family of God. Pwede ba yung gawin, agaw-agawin ka? Colossians 3.11 Here there is no Gentile or Jew. Ito daw bagong family. Circumcised or uncircumcised. Barbarian, Scythian, meaning civilized, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. In other words, in the new family of God, there is acceptance, there is openness, there is inclusion. Walang puera, walang dinidiscriminate, because Christ is all and in all. And yet, in actual practice, ang mga religyoso ngayon, separatist, di ba? Yung congregationalist, mahilig magpuera, Mahilig, pwera siya, huwag tayong sumali. Kasi may mga attitude si Paul na gano'n eh. Pero Paul-ness yun, which is another topic. No? Marami kasi tayong Moses-ness, marami din tayong Paul-ness, marami tayong Peter-ness. In fact, sinabi ni Paul mismo yun eh, 
What? Why do you, some of you say, I follow Christ, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Paul, or I follow Peter? Something going on. Don't we all just supposed to follow God? Follow Jesus? Kaya tayo nalilito, kanino ka ba sumusunod? Kaya tayo nagtuturo ng Jesus filter. Lahat ng katuroan sa buong Bible, salain mo kay Jesus kasi siya ang anak ng Diyos. Siya ang nabuhay na anak ng Diyos. Siya ang namamatay at nabuhay para sa atin. So ang turo ng lahat dyan, marami tayong mapupulot, marami magaganda, pero padaanin kay Jesus para malaman natin na, ah, Jesus nesto para pwedeng isa buhay. Maraming Jesus na si Paul, maraming Jesus na si Peter, tsaka si Moses, pero meron din sila mga kanikanyang mga ugali na Moses nest lang talaga, Paul nest lang talaga, Peter nest lang talaga. Pwedeng pupulutan niya ng aras sa specific cases where they are relevant and in the context ay tama, pero hindi siya dapat ina-apply universally. Ang mga katuruan lang ni Jesus ang universal because in Him, the fullness of the deity lived in bodily form but in no one else. There is only one name given under heaven by which people are to be saved, and that is the name of Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. Kaya kahit Paulness, Mosesness, Peterness, kung ano ano man yan, idadaan parin sa kanya because Jesus is the way. That's why we are promoting Jesusness. It is important. Kahit grammatically, parang question of Jesusness, pero yung idea na kakaitindihan na tayo, dapat makahesos yan. Believing in Jesus grants a new spiritual status, not just a membership in a family, a spiritual status, and that is righteous. Righteous, yung katabi mo na yan. Kasi covered by the blood of Jesus, not inuusig by the law of Moses. Pag inusig mong katabi mo by the law of Moses, sinner yan. Pero pag sinuri mo siya by the blood of Jesus, righteous yan. So yun ang Moses-ness, yun ang Jesus-ness. Alin ang ina-apply natin sa kapwa? Romans 3, 21-22 But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known. Hindi ka makaakyat sa righteousness of God through the law. Binigyan ka ng elevator doon ka sumakay. Yun ngayon, ang sinasakyan mo kaya ka nagiging righteous at si Jesus ang elevator na yun. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. And yet, yung mga iba ngayon, kandara pa pa sa wangong opya sa mga Jew. May ganun, there is no difference. Hindi mo na kailangan maging Jew. Kunwari, a second-rate copycat Jew. Pwede kang ikaw lang, mangyan, di ba? Tagalog ka, Cebuano ka, kung ano ka man lumapit ka sa Diyos, hindi mo kailangan dumaan sa pamamagitan ng kultura at lingwahe ng mga Hudyo. Because the temple is gone. Don't you see? So, we need to move into a new mindset, into Jesusness. New mindset into forgiveness, freedom, and setting free people from needless condemnation. A new mindset into love and acceptance of others not rejection because of your religious conviction. A new mindset into openness and inclusion, not separation. A new mindset into assurance and fearlessness, not in constant fear. And a new mindset into rest and peace, not in worry, not in constantly thinking about what could happen because God is in control. So ano ibig sabihin ng Happy New Year? It should mean a happy new life a happy new way of thinking based on the new teachings of God through Jesus, on Jesusness. Lord, teach us how to apply this in our daily lives. Kung paano maging buo, a one half Jesus follower is a one whole lie. We should be fully following your son, Jesus, not other leaders, not other teachers. Ituro mo sa mga Kristiyanong bumalik kay Jesus. At nang sagayon ang maging bunga ay kapayapaan, katahimikan, pagtanggap, pagmamahal sa kapwa, tulad ng pagtanggap at pagmamahal mo sa amin, although by the law of Moses, no one is acceptable. Father, open our eyes, open our ears, enable our minds to grasp the width, the depth, the height of this freedom in Jesus. Pagbulay-bulayan natin sumandali, spend some time in quiet reflection.